Valves are mechanical devices with manual or automatic control, which, placed in the way of a fluid current, intercept the flow. Thanks to their use, it is possible to start, stop, or control the direction of the flow, or to control the characteristic parameters of a fluid in a pipeline, i.e. the pressure and flow rate. Both types are schematically made up by a fixed external casing, provided with two holes for the inlet and outlet of the fluid. Inside there is a disc, a mobile element, that regulates or interrupts the flow. In order to operate the disc, a linear rotary motion actuator is required. An actuator controls a signal and a source of energy. The control signal has pretty low energy and can be electric type, pressure of a fluid, pneumatic or hydraulic, or even human energy. The source of energy, on the other hand, can be an electric current, a hydraulic, or a pneumatic pressure. In this video, we will explain the operation of the most famous types of actuators for hydraulic valves. And in the videos of this playlist, you will see in detail each of their variants. JAWS, engaged for over 10 years in the industrial supply sector, offers in its catalog every type of valve and actuator from major manufacturers. When an actuator receives a control signal, it responds by converting the energy source into mechanical motion in order to operate the disc. The most common actuators are the manual, electric, pneumatic, and hydraulic ones. Let's see them in detail. Manual actuators use human energy as the source of energy, as they are controlled by an operator who manually intervenes on the shutter through a lever or hand wheel actuator. The leveler actuator is the simplest model, connected directly to the stem. It is usually used for fast rotary motion valves, where with a quarter turn, 90 degrees, it opens or closes the discs. It is therefore mainly used in ball, plug, and butterfly valves. The hand wheel actuator, on the other hand, can be connected to a threaded stem or to a gear train. These allow several turns of the hand wheel to open and close the disc. For this reason, it is usually used for linear motion valves in situations where the flow rate must be adjusted and where more clamping force is required. It is therefore mainly used in globe and gate valves. Moving on to electric actuators, we enter that category which uses electricity as an energy source. The electric actuator actually uses a reversible electric motor so that by reversing the power supply, it can reverse its rotation and thus determine the direction of rotation of the shutter. It is almost always connected to a speed reducer which increases the torque Limit switches are arranged to automatically stop the motor when the valve is fully opened or closed. The control signal is always of the electrical type, but with low energy. It is usually given by a PLC, which receives status signals from the actuator. Modern actuators can also include integrated PLCs, sometimes a second hand wheel type actuator is added to the system so that the valve can be operated in the event of power failure. Among the actuators that use electricity as a source of the energy, we also have electromechanical solenoid actuator. The solenoid valve has a coil which, if energized by electric current, forms an electrical magnetic field that attracts a plunger to itself and consequently the disc connected to it. It exists, the single solenoid valve that is, with a solenoid and a spring, which can be normally open if it is opened by the pressure of the spring and closed by the energized solenoid, or normally closed 
if it is closed by the pressure of the spring and opened by the energizing of the solenoid. Otherwise, it exists in the double solenoid version, that is, equipped with two solenoids, each with its own power supply, in which the piston moves from one energized solenoid to the other. Next is the pneumatic actuator, which is usually controlled by solenoid actuators. Pneumatic actuators use compressed air as a source of energy. In fact, through air pressure, an actuator such as a piston or a diaphragm acts on the disc. In the single acting version, there is a direct action, that is, when the air pressure closes the valve and the spring opens it and reverse action, when the air pressure opens the valve and the spring closes it, or there is a double acting version in which there are two air inlets to open and close the valve. The pneumatic actuators allow, by increasing the size of the piston or diaphragm, to increase or decrease the air inlet force and are generally cheaper than other types of actuators, even if they are a compressed air system. Similar to pneumatic actuators, there are hydraulic actuators. They work on the same principle, but are a pressurized hydraulic fluid, usually oil, as an energy source. The hydraulic actuator usually uses a hydraulic cylinder, which can be single acting with a return spring, but also double acting with two fluid inlets on the sides of the cylinder where a piston moves according to any difference in force between the two sides. Solenoid actuators are usually used for fluid control. Since liquids are nearly impossible to compress, a hydraulic actuator can perform great force. In some applications, it is the process fluid itself that provides the force necessary to operate the valve. These valves are called self-actuated, as for example, they are the check, relief, and safety valves. They are usually equipped with a spring, which connected to the disc performs a closing force opposite to the pressure of the fluid. When the force of the fluid exceeds that of the spring, the shutter opens and the valve is actuated. If this video was useful to you, please let us know by leaving a comment. You can also share it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We recommend that you visit our website, jawscompany.com, to find out more about our upcoming projects.